Here's one simple tip for every shot in your tennis game. And be sure to stick around for the serve tip because it's gonna give you more power. Tip number one on your top spin forehand. Two, one, two. It's the number of hands on the racket throughout the stroke. Take the racket back with a unit turn with both hands on. That's for more coil and more power. You'll hit with one hand and then finish with two to be able to control that power. So it's two, one, two. Most players are one, one, one. Two, one, two. To make sure that you finish like this, you can just let go with your hitting hand, hold the racket with your non-hitting hand, and it'll be correct. Tip number two, the two-handed backhand. A lot of twos, two-minute tennis. There are twos everywhere here. As soon as the ball comes off your opponent's racket, turn the body and get the racket back 180 degrees. I watch so many players struggle with depth and pace from the opponent because they wait for the ball to bounce, and once the ball bounces, then they think, oh, now it's time to take my racket back. There's not enough time after the bounce to do all the swing. So utilize the time before the bounce. As soon as you see it's coming to your backhand, rotate and get the racket back. You can always just wait here if needed, but you're better off being a little bit early and having to wait than waiting and then being late. Tip number three, one-handed topspin backhand. The one-handed topspin backhand is more two-handed than you might think. In fact, you'll take the racket back with two hands, you'll drop the racket down with two hands, and dare I say, you will go slightly toward the ball with two hands. Then you'll let go, separate the arms, pinch the shoulder blades. It'll keep you sideways, the racket tracks out toward the target, it'll give you more racket speed. If you're the type of person who always opens up on your one-handed backhand, it's most likely because you are letting go too soon. You're letting go during the drop. Now this moving back energy is dissipated and now you go to hit the ball and it gets yanked forward. So turn with two, drop with two, initially go with two, then let go, and then you'll actually stay sideways throughout the stroke. Tip number four, the slice backhand. We want the racket at contact on a slice to be very vertical. A lot of players, they think the racket's supposed to be wide open. If you play golf, you know that a club that has this much loft is not gonna send the ball low, the ball's gonna go up. So that's why people float their slice and the ball goes high and slow and it just, when it bounces, it just sits there and it's easier for the opponent. So we gotta figure out how to get the racket more vertical at contact. If you're new to a slice backhand, what you can do is change your grip a little bit past a continental. Now the continental is what you typically hear from coaches, but that often leads, especially if you're a beginner or an intermediate player learning the slice to an open racket. So try changing your grip a little bit farther than you normally do, not all the way to an Eastern backhand, but think between an Eastern backhand and a continental. That'll get your racket more vertical, and then you can hit the ball through, or you'll hit through the ball, you'll hit lower over the net, the ball can actually skid, and your slice becomes so much more consistent. Tip number five. On your volleys, both forehand and backhand, set the racket wherever the ball is going to arrive. So if the ball is coming to you at knee level on your backhand, don't go up here before going down to knee level. From the ready position, immediately set the racket at the level of contact and then volley. If it's a high ball, don't go over here and then up to the ball. From the ready position, immediately go to where the ball is going to arrive. It'll take you less time to get there, so you're not late. And then once you get there, you can hit more through and through the ball gives you more power, more directional control, especially let's say when the ball is gonna be maybe at like thigh level on the backhand, players are up here and then they chomp, they get all this backspin and they can't control the ball. Set the racket where the ball is going to arrive, you'll be a lot more consistent. Tip number six. There are four things that your non-hitting hand should do on an overhead. You should turn with both hands on the racket when you take the racket back for an overhead and the strings are gonna point down in this position, it's kind of akin to the idea of when you turn on a forehand, right, with both hands on the racket. Turn with both hands, don't point, turn with both hands, then reach up, reach out, tuck against your body, and you'll actually finish in an X. So from the front, it looks like this. Turn, reach up, reach out towards your opponent, tuck it in against the body, and you will finish with your arms crossed. By turning with both hands, it makes sure you coil. 
by reaching up and out, it helps you uncoil. Then you want to stop the body's rotation and the energy gets thrown into the forearm and you can snap the forearm faster. Tip number seven. Maybe this has been the one you've been waiting for this whole time. When you hit a serve, and I'm going to duck down so I don't hit the ceiling here. When you hit a serve, do not have your arm and racket in a straight line, but rather have the racket to the inside of your arm. This allows for a more powerful, and I'm going to choke up just a little bit, it allows for a more powerful pronation as you hit. That move, rather than having the racket go over your hand, the move of having the racket come to the inside of the hand is going to work on your topspin. If you're someone who tends to hit slow topspin serves and you're thinking, how can I hit a faster topspin serve? You get, you get the racket to pass to the inside of your hand rather than trying to curl over. You get the racket to pass on the inside of your hand while going up as you hit the ball. Slice serves, flat serves, it's no different. Avoid the arm and racket in a straight line. Have the racket to the inside of the hand. You will get so much more racket speed. Now, if you're tired of lugging around your heavy and cumbersome ball machine to the courts to practice, then you've got to check out the Proton Ball Machine by Hydrogen Sports. And right now, you can get free shipping in the USA when you take advantage of my coupon code at checkout, and it's 2-Minute underscore Proton. The link is in the description, but it'll also be right on the screen at the end of this video. The Proton is fully programmable using its intuitive app, holds up to 100 balls and weighs less than 20 pounds. To check out the Proton, click the link in the description. Remember my coupon code for free shipping, 2-Minute underscore Proton. And if you're looking for people in your local area to play matches against or practice with, maybe you want to find a local league at your level, or you'd love to find a coach who's close to you who can help you with your game, then use my link for Play Your Court, and it's playyourcourt.com slash two minute tennis. When you use my link to sign up, you get 50% off. So click right there to check out the Proton Ball Machine and use my coupon code at checkout for free shipping, and it's two minute underscore Proton. You work on these seven tips, there's no doubt. You're gonna gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.